Imagine a fissure in the earth tearing open in the middle of the night, just a few hundred meters from your home. Fountains of molten rock light up the darkness, and a river of lava begins to flow, consuming everything in its path. What do you do? The answer for all of human history has been the same. You run. But what if running isn't an option? What if the lava isn't just threatening your town, but the economic lifeblood of your entire nation? What if you decided to stay and fight? In 1973, on the tiny Icelandic island of Jaime, the residents and a team of determined scientists made a decision that would stun the world and forever change the science of volcanology. They declared war on a volcano, armed with an audacious, almost insane gamble that no one had ever attempted on this scale before. This is the story of that impossible battle. Before we explore the details of this incredible conflict between humanity and the planet itself, if you find these geological insights critical, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to Geology Watch. Our story begins on January 23, 1973, on the island of Jaime, part of the Vestmanayer archipelago off the southern coast of Iceland. Jaime was, and still is, the heart of Iceland's fishing industry. Its state-of-the-art harbor was the nation's most important, responsible for over 20% of the country's entire economy. Just after midnight, without any warning, a 1,600-meter-long fissure ripped open on the eastern side of the island, a mere stone's throw from the edge of the town of Vestmanayer. A curtain of fire, with lava fountains reaching hundreds of meters into the air, erupted from the crack. Within hours, the island's 5,000 residents were evacuated in a heroic overnight operation, using the very fishing boats that defined their livelihood. The world watched, assuming the island was lost. Another geological footnote. But the real disaster was just beginning with an audacious, almost insane gamble that no one had ever attempted on this scale before. The newly born volcano, later named Eldfell, or Fire Mountain, began to consolidate its fury. The fissure focused its energy into a single, massive cinder cone that started pouring out a colossal river of aa lava, and it was flowing directly toward one irreplaceable target, the harbor. This was an existential threat to the entire nation of Iceland. The lava wasn't just on a path to bury the town. It was on a course to flow directly into the narrow entrance of the harbor, sealing it forever and crippling the country's economy for decades. The loss of this port was unthinkable. The world expected Iceland to cut its losses and abandon the island. The science was clear. You cannot stop a lava flow. It is a force of nature an unstoppable river of rock heated to over a thousand degrees Celsius. But one Icelandic volcanologist, Forbjorn Sigirsson, proposed a radical, untested, and desperate idea. What if they could fight fire with its opposite? What if they could use the volcano's greatest enemy, the cold Atlantic seawater that surrounded them, to fight back? The idea was met with immense skepticism. A lava has an incredibly high heat capacity and quickly forms a thick, insulating crust of solid rock. A small amount of water would simply flash to steam and have no effect. To cool a flow of this magnitude would require an unimaginable volume of water delivered with relentless precision. It was an unprecedented, large-scale experiment with the fate of a nation on the line. With nothing left to lose, the gamble began. At first, a single fireboat, the Siafari, was directed into the harbor. It began spraying a powerful jet of seawater directly onto the smoldering, advancing front of the lava flow. Teams of scientists and volunteers watched anxiously. The water hit the molten rock with a tremendous hiss, creating a dense cloud of acidic steam. But something remarkable happened. The lava front appeared to slow. Emboldened by this small victory, the operation was scaled up dramatically. A fleet of dredge boats was brought in to pump water from the harbor. An army of volunteers and engineers laid miles of pipes across the still habitable parts of the town, creating a complex irrigation system aimed at the lava front. 
powerful pumps capable of spraying 1,000 liters per second were flown in from the United States. What followed was a five-month battle of endurance. Teams of workers operated around the clock, advancing the network of pipes and hoses across the hot, unstable, and still-moving lava field. They worked in hellish conditions, navigating the treacherous glassy crust while jets of superheated steam and volcanic gas erupted around them. They weren't trying to stop the entire volcano. They were executing a brilliant strategy of geological engineering. The goal was not to freeze the whole flow, but to rapidly cool 